Most of us encounter wild animals for the first time through zoos, and zoos have become these institutions of conservation. Um, they have software that optimizes breeding in order to maximize genetic diversity amongst different species and ensure their survival into the future. But without a natural habitat to return to, how do we decide what's, what's natural for them? And at that point, what are we actually conserving? Uh, so these are some experiments that I did just imagining um, what it would be like uh, to not preserve animals as artifacts of a wilderness that doesn't exist anymore and um, evolving them to live in the world that we're creating. So this is a sheep in a lavender farm and a horse in tulip farm. Um, so I wanted to know, like, could we redesign the zoological park to celebrate the evolutionary potential of animals? So welcome to Regent's Park of Evolution. Um, in Regent's Park of Evolution, it's a huge expansion of the old London Zoo. Um, take over all of Regent's Park and showcase a new model of human-animal interaction. Each species in the park is designed to give visitors the experience of encountering um, wild animals. So this is uh, the superbivore. <laughs> Uh, the species scales the vertical rock formations in the um, northwest corner of the park, and it has the neck of a giraffe and the balance of a goat, and it can walk out onto tightrope wires into the forest canopy, and that's where it uses its combination of horns, antlers, and ossicones to rake through the forest canopy and harvest the fruit there, which then spirals down its horn. This is uh, the retro-reflective carnivore. They patiently track the superbivores from an island they live in in the center of the park. They're a new breed of hexapetal predator. That means they have six legs, and they also have adaptations that were formerly only seen in cats or dogs. And um, they don't hunt by stealth, but small muscles running along their spine allow them to twitch their hair and play with the refractive properties of their fur. And this actually becomes a spectacle um, and stuns the superbivore like a deer in headlights. And finally, this is the beaked porcupine. Um, they live in the northeast corner of the park. And what appears to be a perfectly manicured garden, oops. Um, Sorry. What appears to be a perfectly manicured garden is actually the result of a symbiotic relationship between the ants that create the rolling landscape here and the beached porcupine that camouflages itself in the tree, um, or in the, yeah, in the tree. Uh, so these are just some potential flora um, and fauna that um, I designed to begin to ask if we could become creators and discoverers in our, in our own future wilderness. Um, and by building these prototypes, um, I want to blaze trails into an evolutionary future where we can harness the endless potential of biology and create future life forms, um, materials, that are most beautiful and most wonderful and can continue to evolve.